Statistics and Excel. Histogram versus bar chart. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with Statistics and Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because, apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left-hand side, OneNote and Excel presentation tab, 1030 histogram versus bar chart. We will also try to put the transcripts in OneNote as well. And if you go to the View tab, the Immersive Reader tool, you can actually change the language on the transcripts if you so choose and either read or listen to the transcripts in multiple languages. Desktop version of OneNote here, we have the information on the left-hand side, our data, imagining it to be yearly salary or income of employees at a corporation. We've already ordered the data from smallest to largest. In other words, instead of being in order by like alphabetical order of the employees, we've taken the data and put it from smallest to largest, which is a typical thing to do as a first step in sorting the data when we're trying to pull information from it. Now we wanna think about the relationship between a histogram and a bar chart. So we've taken a look at some histograms in prior presentation. Here's one that we built from this data set in a prior presentation. So we wanna actually use the bar chart and think about it like a bar chart and how we can use Excel's function of a bar chart to create, in essence, a histogram. And that will give us a better sense of kind of the relationship between what the similarities and differences are. So up top, we just have some of our standard data up top. So you'll recall that the mean or the average is can be done in a manual method uh, or it can be done with a function. So if we used an Excel function in order to take the mean or the average, we can use the average function. So equals average, and then we would just select the data. So here's the data in the table, and that would give us the average. If we did the manual calculation, we can then say that it's going to be the sum, meaning we add up all the data. To do that, we can use the trusty sum function equals the sum of all the data. And then we can count the data, meaning counting one, two, three, four, all of the data. And in Excel, we can use the trusty equals count function to do that and then select all the data, which is nice. And then of course, we're gonna divide that out. If we used Excel, we would take this cell, which is referenced by the D5 divided by this cell, referenced by D6, 3,630, 400 divided by 51 gives us the average 71, 184, which matches what we got with the function. And then if we take the median, we can do that in Excel by saying equals the median or the second quartile. We could use quartiles if we want, but the median is more common. And if we were going to do it in a manual method. Remember, it's just like Rocky's trainer, uh, the boxer, Rocky's trainer, if, if it's an old movie, but you hit the one in the middle. When you see three of them out there, you hit the one in the middle. That's the advice. Of, so so Rocky's trainer was a, was a fan of using the median, hit the one in the middle. So then if we look at our, our histogram, the major components of the histogram are the buckets down below that we've discussed in prior presentations. So you can see here the definition of the buckets are now 2,000 apart, and we have 15 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 buckets, and they're, separ and they're spanning 2,000, 55,000 to 57,000. So you can see that in this range, we only have the one data point in it, and then we have nothing from 57 all the way up to uh, to what 67 
And then at 67 to 69, we have 7, 69 to 71, 19, 71 to 73, 15, 73 to 75, 7. Now, note that if you were to try to select this data in Excel and create a bar chart instead of a histogram, then you're going to run into problems because the bar chart, what it wants to do is try to put all of these data sets kind of on the X axis and then and then basically say how often they each one of them appear. But you can't have all of these separately listed uh, because because uh, they, they might you, you might not have two numbers that are the same, right? Like if you if you had a small set of data where you had a lot of repetition in whatever it is that was coming up, then you could use the bar chart and it would basically give you the proper X axis. But here, what we want to do is say a range. We have to take this information and make a range from it, like 55,000 to 57,000, so that we have the appropriate bucket. And then we can have a, something like a, this histogram looks a lot like a bar chart. So you might say, hey, I could do that myself. Like I could just make my own buckets. I can make these ranges and I can count how much are in the range. And, and then I can use the bar chart function to create a histogram. And that, if you, so let's see what that would look like. That will give you an idea of the similarities between, again, a bar chart and a histogram. And also sometimes it's useful to do that process, to actually make your own buckets, create your own histogram. Because if you wanted to put like two histograms on top of each other, sometimes that's easier to do with like a bar chart than a histogram. So let's see how we can construct this, this histogram using like a bar chart method. Uh, if we take our information on the left-hand side, we could start with the smallest point, which would be 55. So the 55 is the first bucket. I'm going to bring it down to 49, however, just for that first bucket. And then I'm going to go to, to the 57. And I'll show you why when we do the function. And then from there, we're just going to keep on going up by 2,000. So you can see these. this range goes from 57 to 59 to 61 uh, to 63. So all I do with a formula here is just take the prior one, starting at this point, 57,000 plus 2,000 is 59,000, plus 2,000 is 61,000, plus uh, 2,000 is 63,000. And if I had a formula here that just said equals the one above it plus 2,000, I can drag that formula down and it'll give us... Uh, it'll be able to to give us all of our numbers. So these are the beginning points, except the, the start, the, the first one uh, at 55, I started it at 49. So I should have said these ones, 55, then at 57 to 59 to 61 to 63. Now I'm going to take the ending points. So the ending points end at 57. So there's the 57. And then again, I'm just going to add 2,000. 57 plus 2059 plus 2000 to 61 in excel i would do that by saying equals the cell above it plus 2000 and then i can simply copy that down that's not the only way you could do it you can also type in a couple of these numbers it'll make a trend and then you should be able to copy it down and excel will be able to see the see the relationship uh the pattern so in any case there's the two now now in Excel, if I'm going to if I'm going to use Excel to do this, I would like to then get a bucket that's labeled like this 55,000 comma 57,000 or 55,000 to 57,000 something that looks like this, you can type that into Excel. One way to do that is simply, of course, to type into the cell 49,000 to 57,000. Note, however, you have to be careful when typing numbers or when you're trying to type something in that has like an equal or a plus or something like that, where you don't want it to actually do a function, a calculation, or change it to a number format, but simply put in what you typed. So sometimes you need to put an apostrophe before you type something in to tell Excel, hey, look, I just want you to put what I typed in there. I don't want you to try to make a formula from it. However, even if you type it in there, it's still kind of tedious to do. So we've put these two in here pretty quickly. These two columns, we were able to copy the columns down, even if we have large columns. What we would like to do is make a formula so I can copy the formula down. So when I have formulas that have like text in it, they can look pretty complicated, but once you do them a few times, they're not that bad. So if you wanted to do this with a formula instead of typing it, 
it would look something like this. Equals, we're going to pick what's in cell in this cell, which is represented by C17 here. And then when I want to put a text field, I have to put quotations around it. So this is going to say, I want you to take that what's in this cell. I don't want you Excel to do a formula. I don't want you to add to it or subtract or anything like that, divide. But instead, I want you to just combine it. That's why we have and. I want you to and, take that cell and, and then in quotations, type the text of just a dash. That's not a minus sign. I don't want you to subtract the two cells, Excel. I want you to just put a dash between them and then and the other, the next piece, which is D17, that represents this cell. So it looks a little complicated. You could just type it in there. Uh, you can see in theory what we're doing. But in Excel, it would be great if you can get faster at doing these things. Then, of course, you can do these conceptual concepts quickly uh, in Excel, which helps you to really understand things faster because you're able to practice with them faster. So then we can then uh, do a formula to try to say what's in that bucket. Now, clearly, I could just go into my data and I could say, well, the 55,000 is in that bucket. And then I can go to the second bucket and say it's 57 to 59. And I can go in here to 57 and count the ones up till I get to 59 and so on and so forth. But that's tedious. So clearly we want to be able to do that in Excel. So this is another complicated looking formula, but if, if you're able to get the formulas down, then it's quite useful. So you can see what we're doing in concept. And then if you, if you were to do this in Excel, you, you can do a count ifs formula. So what we're telling Excel I want you to select this entire range and I want you to count uh, the numbers, meaning I don't want you to add them or subtract it, just count them if, and there's an if with an S because we want you to have multiple conditions. There's gonna be multiple conditions. What are those conditions gonna be? Well, I want you to count everything that's greater than 14, uh, 49,000 up to and including 57,000. So, so those are the two conditions. Now note that when I start to add this formula down, you might say, well, wait a second. I want stuff from 49,000 to 57,000, 57,000 to 59,000, 59,000 to 61,000. What if, for example, the number is exactly 59,000? Which bucket is it gonna be in? Is it gonna be in this bucket or is it gonna be in the bucket down uh, below? And the answer we typically gonna, gonna want here is I wanna include it in the upper bucket. So I'm going to say this bucket is 57,000 to 59,000. This bucket is actually everything above 59,000 up to and including 61,000. And by the way, that's why I put 49,000 here instead of 55,000 as the lower range because I want it to be below uh, the, lower, the lower range. So I can say that I want you to pick up everything that's above this number. And if I put 55,000 then it would be right on the line equal to. So I want it to be 49,000 on that first one. And that's why we have that difference. And I'll have that difference in this first bucket than I have up here. Okay, so let's do that then. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say count ifs, and then we selected the range. Now this is my argument. So we said count ifs, I selected the range with this argument, there's the range, and then comma to the next argument. So now because we're, we wanna have greater than, we have to use the the quotations again. So we've got to use the quote, greater than, quote, and then we're going to combine it with, and therefore we need the and, the uh, C17. And so that's going to be saying, I want everything that is greater than what's in C17, the C17 representing this 49,000. So this is the table being selected, comma, you want to count everything that's greater than uh, what's in C17, which is this 49,000. Now, if I just hit enter there, it would take everything. It would basically count the whole thing. I think it's 51 numbers because it's all greater than that lower limit. But we have the second condition, comma, condition number two, which is going to select the entire table again. So we're just redoing the thing, entire table, comma, the condition here, quotation marks, needs to be less than or equal to. So notice that that first condition was, I just need it to be greater than this number. 
I'm not saying or equal to, I just greater than. This one I need it to be less than or equal to. So we have the two symbols and then and, and then the D17, which represents the 57,000. So that formula, although complex looking, gives us our pop our calculation quickly and then we can copy that formula down and it will do the it will do the same uh, calculation pulling the relative references this number and this number in other words if i go down to here for example we have the same formula that we just copied down and it says table count the same range if uh, it's greater than c23 instead of c17 because it, it took the relative reference down here, so that's the 67,000. And then comma, the table, second condition, less than or equal to D23 instead of D17. And D23 is the 69. So it's saying, take anything that's above the 67,000, not, uh, and then up and to and including 69,000. So you can see by doing that, we've created our own buckets. So now we've got our buckets in table format. So one, seven, 19, 15, seven, one, and one, one, seven, 19, 15, seven, one, and one. Clearly in table format, even if I understand exactly what's happening, it's not as visually easy to see than when I make it into, of course, the histogram. So here's a histogram that we made with basically uh, the bar, uh, the bar charts. So now this one is, you can see, we just basically selected this data here, selected these two datas and made this the, the X axis being this list of numbers. And then, and, and then you've got our histogram that was created with the bar chart. And you can see if I compare that to the prior histogram, this is just a copy of the histogram we had up top. It's basically the same kind of calculation. Now, when you do the bar chart, normally like the, 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 these, it's not as wide. So these are skinnier oftentimes. So you can, but you can customize it and make them wider, eliminating the space in between the bars, if you so choose. And you have a little bit more flexibility with the bars. It's easier to kind of flip the X and Y axis and stuff like that. And again, with the bar charts, if you had a second set of data, and you wanna put two kind of histograms on top of each other and try to color them differently and make one color like striped or something like that so you can see one histogram on top of the other, uh, then those are things that sometimes it's easier to do when you convert the data so that you can make a bar chart out of it. Now note that this whole process up here of making this table, you could you could make thi like this bit uh, a little bit easier using an array function. So we could do a similar process. Uh, let's do it. Well, let's just reveal this. So this is just the end number. So instead of having the beginning and end of my buckets, of these buckets, we just have the end number. So I just said 57,000 plus 2,000 is 59,000. I copied that down. 2,000, 2,000 increase all the way down. And then in order to get my numbers over here, instead of using this more complex formula, we can use an array formula, which is a, it's kind of a newer, a newer kind of technique, which has that spill factor. So in this cell, we said equals the frequency, and then we picked up our table. This ref refers to the table. And then, and then uh, basically, we, uh, we then referred to our D, uh, 33 to D47 representing our data set. And then when you hit enter in the first cell, it'll basically spill out the numbers down below it. So, so whenever, so if I was to click in any of these numbers below it, it'll be referring to the lead cell, the cell that I basically put the, uh, the array function in. So these are kind of fancier, newer ways to do it. I, I still think it's useful to, to know multiple ways to do it, uh, but really neat, really neat, quick ways to be able to put these together. And sometimes they can do it a lot faster. But the point is that uh, the histogram 
and the bar chart are kind of related in some ways. And like I say, it could be useful to actually create your own buckets sometimes uh, and then create your own bar chart type uh, histograms in order to increase the flexibility of what you might be able to do with the histograms.